Welcome back guys, I trust you've been staying safe. Marriage is a very beautiful thing, but sometimes if you are not careful of the partner you are picking, you could actually be signing your death warrant. Today's true crime story is looking at a woman who ended up attending her own funeral. Yeah, you heard me right. It's looking at the true crime story of a woman called Noella Rokundu who ended up attending her own funeral. She was declared dead, a funeral was organized for her, and she ended up becoming a guest at this same funeral. This true crime story involves a jealous husband and a couple of hitmen, as well as immigration from Africa to Australia. If you are ready for this true crime story, just buckle up, and let's go. Before we get into today's true crime story, kindly support our campaign against femicide by going to the comment section and typing say no to femicide or hashtag please stop the femicide. This will go a long way to help our campaign. Additionally, kindly subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet done so. Our analytics show us that a lot of you who watch our videos have not actually subscribed to the channel. Please take a second and just hit the subscribe button and turn on post notifications. It helps us to grow and it also helps us to push the campaign further. Now to the substantive case at hand. It all starts in Burundi where a woman by name Noella Rokundo immigrated from Burundi in Africa to Australia in 2004 with her five children. Now, when Noella got to Australia, she met a man by name Balenga Kalala, who was a Congolese refugee who helped translate English to Swahili for Rukundo at the resettlement agency where both of them were working. So, it was nice, you know, to meet your fellow African in a foreign land. And this African so happens to be someone you can depend on for interpretation. So at least you know that the chances of this person taking advantage of you are very less because he's more like your home person, you know. You are from the same continent. You identify better with each other than maybe with other foreign people you came to meet there. This was what set it off for these two people. Now, over the next decade, Rukundo, Noella, and Kalala would settle in Melbourne and then eventually get married and have three children together. This was a beautiful story because, you know, love is not easy to find, especially love that actually ends in marriage. And if you are familiar with the African version of love, at least back then, any relationship that led to marriage seemed genuine and it looks like marriage is more like the ultimate for any dating relationship. So for Rukundo, it was a beautiful thing. And for Kalala, his motives seemed also good because who would stick by a woman with five kids for five years, for a decade and even end up marrying her. So it seemed like this was a match made in heaven because most men wouldn't do that. But then, things were not as rosy as they seemed because over the next decade, after they had gotten married, by 2015, Kalala became convinced that Noella Rukundu was actually cheating on him. In his mind, he had some suspicions which led him to believe that Rokundo was dating another man and having an affair behind him. So in January 2015, when Noella Rokundo decided to fly to Africa for her country of Burundi for her stepmother's funeral, Kalala didn't resisted. He obliged 
and he asked that she goes to do the final funeral rites and this is a big deal in Africa. So Noella Rokundo went but little did she know that when she returned home a month later she'd be attending her own funeral. Now the question is what will lead to this and I bet you what happened became a nightmare that haunted Noella Rokundo forever. Rokundo's husband, Balenga Kalala, who had wrongly suspected her of infidelity, had taken some measures when she told him that she was going to Burundi in Africa for her stepmother's funeral. Unknown to Noella, Kalala, her husband, had hired hitmen to murder her while she was in her home country. So at the point of saying goodbye honey, I love you, have a safe flight, he had all this planned for her and that is how wicked some people can be. And imagine such a person is your spouse that you've gotten married to and taking a vow that for better for worse you are going to spend your entire life with this person. Now this is the guy orchestrating the worst for you and yet smiling to your face and blowing you kisses. That is how dangerous some marriages can end up becoming. So, when Noella got to her home country, she went for the funeral and everything seemed to be going well. She was even on phone giving Kalala updates as to how things were going and she was excited she even missed her husband so much she was looking forward to getting back to australia and being with him so when all was said and done she retired to her hotel room and then she called her husband kalala at this point kalala told noella that since she has had such a stressful experience during the preparation for the funeral and the actual funeral itself, she should step out to have some air, you know, just take in the breeze and stretch her legs. This seems like an advice that would come from a loving husband who is thinking of the best for his wife. But there was a twist to it. Unknown to Noella, she stepping outside is what was going to lead to the hate men being able to grant access to her without necessarily making noise for people to get alarmed and see what was happening. She obliged because she trusted her husband and told him that, okay, I'm just stepping out, honey. I'll call you afterwards. And as soon as she stepped out, there was a man standing with a gun pointed to her and told her that she should keep quiet and come with him, else, if she makes any noise, he was going to blow her head off and then escape. Now, being a wise woman, she assessed the situation and realized that the best she can do to at least stay alive in the meantime was to go ahead with what this man was asking her to do, and she did. So she followed this man and he ushered her into a vehicle with two other men waiting in it. She got in, this man also joined, and the four of them drove off to an unknown location. Of course, she was also blindfolded so that she couldn't trace her way to where they were going or even trace it back. They got to their destination. They took her out and then they tied her. Now, at this point, they started asking her questions. Questions like, what have you done that would necessitate someone coming to us to put a hit on you to get you killed? And she said that, well, I haven't done anything to anybody. I'm just a lady living my life with my kids and my husband. I actually don't have a grudge with anyone. The, the man still pushed forward because if that is the case, then why would somebody put a hit on you? So, they kept talking with her and they told her that somebody had actually paid to get them killed. 
And she was like, I don't know who will do this. Now, this is a bit unusual because mostly you wouldn't have hitmen have these back and forth conversations. I don't know if you believe in the spiritual, but I think that maybe to an extent, Noella had a bigger force looking after her because how many people have been kidnapped by hitmen and would be able to have such a conversation with the hitmen being so empathetic that even at a point, they decided that they were going to call the boss man. The boss man here was reference to the person who had hired them to commit the hits. So whilst Noella was tied and blindfolded, they called the boss man. And she could hear the person over the phone as they spoke. Now, when they called the boss man as they were speaking, she thought this voice sounded familiar. And they told the person that, oh, we already have her. And suddenly, Noella recognized the voice and said, no. Well, she said it to herself that this is her husband's voice. And just at that time, the voice ordered the hitman that, oh, good, then kill her. And at this point, she realized what the whole thing was about. It wasn't some random person who had a beef with her, but it was rather her own husband who had put a hit on her. And even though she was bound to the chair and blindfolded, she was so shocked that she passed out and fell to the floor, still tied to the chair. The hitman ended the call, and then... Some few minutes later, Noella woke up after they had tried to resuscitate her. But something strangely happened because when she woke up, the kidnappers told her that they are not going to kill her because they have a code. And the code is that they do not kill women and children. But, you know, it didn't even end there. They indicated that they also were going to let her go because they know her brother. You see how things are lining up in her favor. I think that this lady is really blessed and she had a lot of things working in her favor. So they just also wanted to help her get to know the type of man that she is married to. So they told her that they had gathered evidence of the whole thing on a pen drive they will give it to her but before that they are going to call her husband again and try to increase the bounty to see how determined he is to get her killed and they called her husband this time they put it on loudspeaker so she could hear her husband but she was quiet and they told the husband that the money he needs to pay has been increased to about an extra 10,000 US dollars. Kalala was adamant and indicated that that is not a problem. He was going to wire the money. They should continue with the mission. And they told him, we need the money before we execute. And he sent the money. At this point, Noella knew that this man was determined to get her life ended. Now, these hitmen told her husband that the job has been done and he was excited but he wasn't smart because if he was that smart he would have asked for evidence or proof that the hate has been done maybe they could have also fabricated something for him but he believed they are say so and then they drove noella back to a point gave her all the evidence against her husband and gave her some few hours within which she needs to leave the country and that was specifically 80 hours they told her that you must leave this country in 80 hours time and that her husband is serious to get her killed and if they has they have spared her life if she doesn't leave he would begin to get suspicious and could send another head squad who may not have the same code that they have now Noella quickly, like somebody who has been given a fresh start to life, 
quickly exited the country. Now, back in Australia, Kalala, who also believed that his wife has been killed, had already gone ahead at the time he was informed by the hitman to also inform his neighbors, colleagues, loved ones, and people in his community and circles that his wife was also dead and they had actually organized a funeral for her. On the D-Day of this funeral, as people were commiserating with Kalala, who was playing the part of a grieving husband, he raised his head and he saw his wife walking towards him. He seemed like he had seen a ghost and he shouted, Hey, Noella, is that you or am I seeing a ghost? She didn't talk. So, for some few seconds to about a minute, he still mistook her for a ghost. And he kept shouting this and walking towards her. And when he got close to her, he put his hand on her shoulder and noticed that this was not a ghost, it was a human being, full flesh and blood. And then, it was at this point that Noella screamed, Surprise! I'm alive! And... You can imagine, Kalala was just overwhelmed and he started pleading with his wife to forgive him because at that point, he he knew that she would also know what has happened and that some way, somehow, she has gotten out of it. But it didn't end there. Wisely, Noella Rokundo didn't just come alone. She had already informed the security agencies, so they were actually with her at a vantage point and they swooped in and they arrested Kalala. At this point, it was clear that the marriage was on the rocks, and the law also had to take its course because what her husband had done was it, it amounted to somebody who had solicited for a hit to take out someone's life. So the law also had to take its course. Noella Rukundo, testified and indicated that she just couldn't believe it because in no world would she have ever thought that her husband, with whom she already has kids, would be capable of getting her killed. In his defense, the husband, Kalala, indicated that it's not his fault, but it's the fault of the devil. Now, this is where I have a problem personally. Sometimes the devil is actually minding his own business and gets surprised when somebody is blaming him for something that person has done. Well, that's just on the lighter side. But I think that this is not the devil. It's him. He knew what he was doing. He planned it. He schemed. He recruited hitmen to the point where they even told him he needs to up the ante in terms of the payment. He did. That shows the resolve with which he wanted to do what he wanted to do. That is not the devil. At least, I don't think it's the devil. Let me know what you think in the comment section. In the end, Kalala, the husband, was sentenced to to nine years in prison with the possibility of parole after six years. But remarkably, Noella Rukundo indicated that she holds no grudge against her husband. She said, he's a human being. From my heart, I forgive him. But for me, I don't think that it's just as straightforward as that. She may have forgiven him, but I don't think she's going to give him that chance again because this is something she needs to learn from. If you give him a chance again, he may try and get away with it and be successful next time. So what do you think about this whole thing? And this is not a fiction story. This is a true story. And it goes to show that You never really, really know people until their back is against the wall or they are at their worst and have something to lose. Then you will see who they really are and what they stand for. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet done so. Leave your comments in the comment section. And like I always say, stay safe and keep an eye out. You will never know who it is. Catch you next time.